What does the Red Bee game teach us about uh, quality and and uh, and in healthcare? Well, it's a it's a purified model of what is known in industry as reliance on inspection to improve. You mm -hmm. make the thing, you look at whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, you throw it out. Uh, and a whole lot of belief and process. Uh, has been organized in our lives, not just in healthcare, in fact, in our entire lives around that idea. Make it, study it, if you don't like it, throw it out. Uh, when there are people involved, like the workers in the Red B game, it's a terrible environment. I mean, it, you're out of control. You can't, you can't make things, you can't change it, but you're being held accountable for improvements you can't accomplish. And it produces this whole vicious cycle of misunderstanding, anger, frustration, demoralization, and by the way, most importantly, in some ways, no improvement. So it, it just, it's a purified example of the wrong way to think about how to make things better. And why do you think, we, so many people have seen the red bead game in, in, in healthcare. What makes it so hard to learn those lessons? If you see the bead game, you say, well, that's not going to work. What else would I, could I do? You have to have a place to have that conversation. There has to be a place where people can actually sit together and say, what do we want to do? What is the process? How will we make it better? Could we learn together? Maybe we need to come up with a new way to understand each other. Well, that takes time. It takes energy. And you notice in the bead game, when I'm doing the bead boss, it goes faster and faster and faster. Why? Because the productivity pressure is on. The defects are making you go faster exactly at the time when you need to take a breath and in a way go slower and stop and reflect. Healthcare, that's really hard right now. Ask a stressed doctor or nurse about whether they'd like to sit down and talk about the process. I, I think at the moment, they, that sounds really hard. So when people talk about um, the lessons from the Red B game in, in their organization, what advice might you give people um, relative to, to where they are in the organization at different levels? It kind of depends on where they are in the organization. For mm -hmm. a frontline worker, look, if there's a pay-for-performance system and you're being treated like a bead worker, uh, there's, you, you may feel very helpless. You can't, you can't work in that system feeling effective to change the system. It's hard to say what to, uh, what's best there. Talk to each other, understand that at least in the workforce. And by the way, if you change the way you act, even if the, in a hostile environment, it's more fun. It's more fun to improve. It's more fun to learn. It's harder, but it's more fun. And so I'd say do that. In middle management levels, understand how crucial you are. If there are eight or 10 people who report to you, you run that department, you're, you're, you are determining the game in a way. You, I mean, you're, you're either going to see yourself as a coach and supporter to the growth and development of capabilities and uh, knowledge for yourself and others, or you're going to see yourself as a regulator, enforcer, controller. You decide, but you just watch the B game, and what do you think is going to happen? At the senior executive level, it's sort of the same. You're setting the tone. You're setting the pace. At that level, I think you need to ask some very hard questions about corporate systems. Does the compensation system act like the bead boss? Are you using data and information correctly? Are you misinterpreting variation? Are you able to spend the time and energy to get different components of the system together so they actually can understand what's going on? Uh, can you celebrate defects in a way? Can you, can, you under, can, can you set an environment in which you treat failure as a good thing because it teaches you, if you're wise enough to look at it, uh, there are big stakes here for boards and, 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 and senior, senior executives. I think if I had to maybe give one piece of advice, um, it, it's to ask how you're doing. That is, ask if you're a director, ask the workforces, how, how am I treating you? How, what does this feel like to you? Am I being, does this feel right to you or not? And, and be willing to set up the circumstance for a real dialogue. As an executive, same question, which is, am I helping you improve the work that I know you want to do better? Or am I doing things that keep you from inventing and trying and being a team? You may hear some things that you could put to use. What are some of the gaps in, in what the Red Bead game can do for us as, as a teaching tool for systems and quality? Yeah, I mean, it's a great demonstration for what it does. There are some uh, fuzzy edges to it or gaps. Uh, a couple, for example, are, um, the, 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 the bead box is visible. You, that is right from the start, you can see the cause. 
and that's one of the things that is makes the workers feel so helpless is they, they actually know the answer. Get get the reds out of the mix. I can't produce, you know, blue if if there are reds there. So they know it's a supplier problem. In the work we do in healthcare, we don't no, we don't know that. Uh, the, the the causes of the complications and problems and waste and you know miscommunication we see, the causes are very networked and, and difficult to to visualize. Uh, Paul Vitalden, again, my, my teacher, says healthcare doesn't have a catwalk. You can't walk up and watch it like you can on a manufacturing floor. So one of the points I try to make after the big game is, you know, the game you're in, it isn't visible. You don't know the causes. And actually that leads us to a whole agenda of leadership because if the causes aren't immediately evident, then you, leader, workforce, manager, you, you, you need to find the skills and tools and science that'll help you understand the causes. And that, that's an agenda that is easy. It, we kind of, we, we gloss over it a little in, in the B game. Uh, a second is that, that is really crucial, which is in the world of improvement, you, PDSA, Plan, Do, Study, Act, the cycles of testing are really crucial. Uh, we work in complex systems, and unless you test changes like in small cycles, it's really hard to learn your way to what ought to be done. The B game doesn't have any testing in it, and, and it would be hard even to imagine a test of change because it's such a simple system. But just remember that B game doesn't include a key piece of improvement, which is running small tests of change all the time to probe the world and understand it better and increase your confidence in what changes work. Uh, the third is, um, is, is the role of the customer. You don't see the customer in the big game, but they're out there. And, and in the world of improvement, we really need to change that relationship. And our relationship with the people we serve so we understand essentially what's blue and what's red is, is crucial. And it's a whole, the whole maturation of the improvement movement, thanks largely to Maureen Bisignano, I think, who's been an international spokesperson for this, is to understand what matters to, the, to you, not just what's the matter with you. That's not in the big game. I think the last piece is is creativity and reinvention. I mean, there is a big question outside the bee game, which is, should we make beads at all? You know, maybe something other than beads is better. Mm -hmm. And in the world of improvement, we try to remember control, quality control, that's kind of keep things stable. Mm -hmm. Quality improvement, which is really the bead game issue about learning. But we also have to have innovation. and. Uh, and the full set suite of skills in, 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 the, in the management of improvement to me is fostering control when it's needed, fix the flat tire if your car tire's flat, improvement and learning all the time everywhere, and then how are we gonna make, sh how are we gonna make airplanes instead of trying to make cars better? How, how do you invent something totally new? Mm -hmm. So B game's the beginning, but it's not the end. Mm -hmm.